To draw a room using one point perspective, you'll start by drawing a rectangle. This will be the back wall. Inside the rectangle, make one dot. That's your vanishing point. And you will need a ruler for this project. Use it first to connect the corners of the rectangle to the vanishing point. Draw away from each corner to create the walls, the floor, and the ceiling. Make sure your ruler is touching the dot and the corners of the room before you draw or the lines aren't going to work for you. To draw on the back wall, just draw like you normally would. The most common mistake is to draw on the side walls the same way that you would draw on the back wall. Instead of doing that, if you're drawing a door or a window, draw one vertical line, then connect that line, the top and bottom of that line, to the vanishing point. That diagonal line is now the top and the bottom of your door or your window. And then draw a vertical line down to show where that door or window ends. The new thing that you have to learn with this kind of drawing is to think three-dimensionally. If you draw an object right onto the back wall, it'll look two-dimensional, like it's painted on the wall, so that's a no-no. Um, to make the objects three-dimensional, draw them on the back wall, then use the vanishing point to draw guidelines that go away from every corner of the object. This will help you draw a bigger, closer copy of that first shape that you drew. And now you have the front and the back of a couch here, and you have the diagonal lines that connect the front and the back of the couch. So all you have to do is soften those lines and add details to make the couch look sittable. And I'll do the same thing here with this little coffee table, but instead of starting the shape on the wall, I'm starting it on the side of the couch. I know it's really not easy to learn to draw this way. It took me like at least three months of practicing before I really got it. But there is this, this magic moment where you will get it. And that's when you know you've really leveled up as an artist. Here I'm going to use that same technique with a coffee table. And I want you to notice how much erasing I'm doing. Erasing is normal. You will have to erase a lot to draw this way. So be sure that you aren't pushing hard when you draw so that it's very easy for you to erase. I know these shapes seem complicated, but really it's just like drawing boxes, skinny boxes, wide boxes, and assembling them to make the furniture in your house. This book right here is obviously just another little box. Shelves seem pretty complicated, but it's again, it's the same process as drawing a table. It just takes more time and patience because you're basically drawing a new table for every single shelf. And that's a big trick of drawing this way is time and patience. They're always going to be the difference between uh, simple shapes and complicated shapes. So it's going to be the difference between a simple drawing and a really uh, complicated or amazing drawing. You'll notice here too that I started the shelves in the room instead of against the wall. So you could do that with any furniture that you want sitting inside the room. If I wanted to draw a chair here, for example, I just draw the side of the chair that's facing me, draw it exactly where I want it to be in the room, and then use the vanishing point to create guidelines that go from the corner of that chair, the corners of that chair, towards the vanishing point. And you can use those guidelines now to draw um, the top and the bottom of the chair and the diagonal lines that go back into space. When I make windows or doors, I start by drawing one vertical line, then using the vanishing point to create guidelines for the top and the bottom. And then all you have to do is decide how wide you want that window or door to be. You'll notice that there are a lot of parallel lines in one point perspective. The guidelines show you how big or small a shape should be, but it's your job to create the parallel lines that make the objects really look three-dimensional. Like, is the back of that couch there the same shape as the front of the couch? Because it should, should be. It's just different sizes. And after you've done this for a while, you will get the hang of it, and it'll just be fun to start adding any little details you want to put in to make the room look real. Obviously, I couldn't do this project without a ruler. I couldn't do it well anyway. But every year, there is at least one or two students who do try to do it without a ruler. I don't know why. They always end up frustrated and they always end up starting over. So just take the time now to make friends with your ruler. Don't get really upset if you get frustrated. Just keep practicing, erasing, practicing, erasing, because there is, again, that magic moment where it's going to be worthwhile. For the floor and the roof here, I made evenly spaced dots on the back wall, and then I used the vanishing point to help me create that wooden floor and now this tiled ceiling. To make the tiles look 3D, you use the vanishing point to create the lines that are coming towards you. 
but then you make a diagonal line that connects the back right corner of the ceiling to the um, front left corner. And then every time that diagonal line touches one of the guidelines, draw a horizontal line, and that'll make a tiled surface that goes back in space. When you draw organic shapes like plants or fruit, you don't need to use the vanishing point to make guidelines. Just draw those things the way you normally would. But pay attention to where you draw those objects because you wouldn't want to plant right on the edge of a table, for example. You want the plant in the middle of the table. So that's where the bottom of that shape goes. Put the bottom of the shape where you want it to be in the room. And when you draw organic shapes, you don't need a vanishing point to help you draw the shape but you will need the vanishing point to help you see how small the shape gets as it moves further back in space. So I did this one plant up close and then I used the vanishing point to help me draw a matching plant on the other side of the bookcase. And I'll do the same thing for these trees outside the window. It's fun once you make these rooms to fill them with details that are exciting to you. So here's an art trivia challenge. 20 art bucks to any student who can tell me what famous painting I drew here over the couch.